Plastic parts are literally everywhere, in everything we interact with, every day. Most of these parts were probably injection molded, which makes this a huge industry. SolidWorks recently introduced a brand new module with some powerful features for this industry, and it's called, quite fittingly, SolidWorks Plastics. Please enjoy. Understanding how plastic parts gets filled is a huge insight when it comes to manufacturing. Injection molded parts are literally everywhere in every machine. SolidWorks recently introduced a brand new module called SolidWorks Plastics, which allows you to see the flow patterns in real time across your injection molded parts. What this is, is this is a highlighted area showing us the fill, pressure, stress, ease of fill, sink marks, and a host of other data that we can collect using SolidWorks plastics. We can see here the real-time flow patterns which easily show us where air pockets could get trapped and knit or weld lines can form. SolidWorks plastics is an amazing tool that is really going to give a lot of insight to the designer of plastic injection molded parts like never before. It automatically calculates the fill pressure, fill time, and lets us know if our gate selection is going to be okay for injection molding. Here we can see the weld and knit lines colored. So these are all areas that could be potential weak points or potential blemishes on the surface. We can also show lots of useful things about the injection molded parts. Here, as we watch the flow go across, we can highlight to see the air traps. You can see here the purple bubbles. These are where air could get trapped and can cause potential problems on the surface. We can show a combination of air bubbles, knit lines, velocity, vectors, and there's a handy results advisor that lets us know in plain English if our part can be filled or not and what the pressure and fill time should be to get this part created. We can capture all this information automatically and push it directly into generated Microsoft Word document report, which makes it easy for us to document our plastic injection molded design and save it for later so we can share the valuable information that we learned from SolidWorks Plastics with literally anyone. Let's take a look at the interface. This is a part we've designed, and now we would like to run a check on it for manufacturability using SolidWorks Plastics. SolidWorks Plastics has its very own tab to keep everything you need right at your fingertips. All we need to do is choose the polymer we'll be using from the included database which lists technical data breakdowns of each polymer. Here, we'll choose polycarbonate. Next, we simply choose the injection molded machine we want to run this plastic simulation on. Choosing the right machine is important, as some machines may not have enough pressure to fully fill the molten plastic part. Next, we'll set up the flow settings themselves. We can see that SolidWorks Plastics has already automatically calculated the fill time for us, which can be one of the trickiest things to do manually. And now, we're just going to set a gate location, the point where the plastic actually is injected into the part. This is as easy as simply clicking anywhere on your 3D SolidWorks model, and a gate is automatically placed there for you. Now, we can simply run the plastic simulation get some great information about our design. It takes a few minutes here, but it'll show us a nice colored representation when we're done of how our part can be filled. Well, our results are in, and we can see that SolidWorks Plastics shows us that the settings we chose, this part will not be able to be filled. Good thing we cut it here in SolidWorks Plastics before we spent real money on making a failed part. So let's go see what we can do to change it. If we play the animation, we can see the fill pattern, and we can see that the plastic doesn't make it all the way out to the corners. This is called a short shot fill. So let's see what we can change to make it a little bit better. The great thing about running the fill simulation right inside of SolidWorks, or SolidWorks Plastics, is that we can simply make changes to the SolidWorks model and then rerun the plastic simulation to see the effects of our changes right away. It's really handy to have that functionality to change it and then go right back and rerun the simulation. So here are the new results. 
After changing the geometry a little, it can now be filled with the plastic very well, all the way to the corners. So this part is good. It can be easily filled with the molten plastic without causing a short shot. Now that we've found the right design for the part, Let's make a cavity layout. We're just going to pattern this to make four separate pieces. After that, we're just going to use sketch lines to draw runner paths that connect the injection molded machine to each of the four cavities. Runner channel design is very easy in SolidWorks plastics. All we have to do is use standard SolidWorks sketching tools. Then we just click on the sketches themselves, type in the diameter of the runner or channel that we want, and SolidWorks plastics will do the rest for us. It's nice that we don't have to model up all of the geometry for the runner channels ourselves for each piece. SolidWorks plastics basically just interprets our lines and adds the geometry for us and this saves us a lot of time so let's go run the analysis to see if our four cavity fill results are going to be good or not so here we can see that the same type of error occurred as before where we don't have enough pressure to fill all four molds at the same time so what can we do let's see these results in detail we can see that it barely fills at all probably cooling down too fast because of the runner size that we chose. It's nice that we can kind of see this, and you can actually see the plastic creeping in, cooling down, and then finally hardening, which will restrict the flow and ultimately shut off the gate itself. So to accommodate that, let's increase the runner size and rerun the analysis. So we can see here that it fully fills with our new runner size. Again, it's very nice that we caught this without going through a single real-world mold, all virtually. So let's try another layout, now that we know that four cavity works well. Here we have two different parts. In other words, a family mold layout. One for the top cover, and one for the bottom housing. This is a very common way to make parts, as the plastic will look the same both on the top and the bottom if they're shot at the same time. So we'll do the same thing and add the runners very quickly just by selecting the sketch lines that we drew here, typing in a diameter, and we're done. When we run the analysis, you can see that the part on the left takes a little bit longer to fill than the part on the right. This can cause a lot of potential problems when we run it in real life. You want both parts to fill at the exact same moment. Luckily for us, SolidWorks Plastics has a nifty little feature to fix this automatically for us. It's called Runner Balancing. Runner Balancing will automatically calculate the runner size of each the left and the right parts, so both parts get filled at the same time. I personally really like this feature. This would be almost impossible to do by hand or manually. SolidWorks Plastics does it for us with ease. As we can see now, the two parts fill both at the exact same time, thanks to the automatic runner balancing of SolidWorks Plastics. There are many other results we can look at, such as cooling time, fill pressure, sink marks, and a host of reporting data that we can get directly from SolidWorks Plastics.